Welcome to yet another class on uh, control of nonlinear dynamical systems. All right. Um, so we are now. Um, well, this is lecture six seven. Uh, we are in, I believe, the fourth week. Yeah, and uh, we have already seen all the stability theorems, uh, different variants. We've seen some examples. Uh, I believe you already did. You already have your tutorial or. Is it going to happen this coming Saturday? Okay, all right. So you'll also have your first tutorials where we will uh, look at, you know, all the. Um, well, hopefully you will see some examples on how to use the uh, stability theorems. All right. And uh, in the last uh, set of lectures, we saw the proof of the stability theorem. Okay. We of course we did the proof of one specific theorem. All right. This is the most basic theorem on Lyapunov stability. But you saw that it still gets relatively involved technically. Okay, so we need to make some interesting arguments. So we went through multiple steps. So in the in the first stage, we uh, the dominating function that is the class K function was taken to be some simple structure, right? And uh, based on that, given an epsilon, we chose a delta, right? And in all cases, the choice of delta always had this kind of a structure. Okay, always had this kind of a structure, right? Uh, and um, then we went on to the more general case, and here also uh, things were not significantly different. All right, um, so so the way uh, we choose delta was again very similar. Instead of the alpha epsilon one square, we just plug in the epsilon one into the class K function itself. All right, so. Um, of course, there were some technicalities here and there. I mean, you started with an open set, then you took inverse of the open set uh, using a continuous function. So, you got another open set. So, all of those things, some of which I illustrated with pictures like this, were also involved. Okay. So, uh, it was a game of, uh, I mean, the, this epsilon delta business is completely uh, a game of finding these open sets. All right. So, that is what we were trying to do because we do not have a structure for V itself. Nor do we have the structure for the differential equation, yeah. But you see the power of. Uh, I hope you sort of get a feel for the power of the method that um, this theorem is very qualitative, right? It does not rely on what is your system, what is your Lyapunov function. It works, okay. Irrespective of what is your function, what is your Lyapunov function, and so on and so forth, you you can get a stability result, and this is how the proof will go, okay. Now. Um, of course, I wanted you to complete the uniform stability proof. The homework has already been posted. Yeah, uh, I believe one homework is already due. Okay. Um, so anyway, so this is how we proceed. We'll continue to do some homeworks. Uh, in between, there'll be due homeworks and things like that. So um, please go on and continue to do this because the homeworks are relatively small extensions of whatever we are doing in class. So honestly, if you are sitting in class, the homework should not take you more than fifteen minutes. Like, like each problem should not take you more than 10 15 minutes okay so if you're following most things in class homework should be relatively easy to do okay so i i hope that you are uh, focusing on doing your homeworks a large part of the grade is in fact in the homeworks okay great so where do we what do we want to do now we stated the uh, stability theorem and we proved the stability theorem right anyway we stated all the theorems so we proved the stability theorem in the last class now we want to Prove the exponential stability or the, sorry asymptotic stability theorem. Exponential stability is uh, not a easy target to achieve for nonlinear system, so we are not going to worry too much about it. Okay, we want to look at the asymptotic stability theorem. So what does it say? I have not written the entire statement. I have just said in addition. What is in addition? In addition to this, that is, you have v which is uh, positive definite in some domain and for all time, and it's c1. And further, it is negative semi-definite for all x and br. Then the equilibrium is stable. In addition to that, if you also have that v dot is not just semi-definite, but in fact negative definite in that same domain for all time greater than initial time, then you have asymptotic stability. Okay. So this is what now we want to prove the next step in some sense. So because we have already proved 
uh, stability yeah the only thing we need to prove is attractivity so remember that um, asymptotic stability is just a combination of stability and attractivity if you add uniformity to stability uniformity to attractivity you get uniform asymptotic stability and so on and so forth right so we are already uh, know the terminology pretty well so once you know stability and attractivity we know that we can make all the other definitions also okay excellent all right so if that is clear remember i am only interested in proving attractivity okay now i am going to state attractivity in a slightly funny way so remember when i needed to prove stability i first defined i mean i, I in this aside if you notice i wrote what is stability and just to remind ourselves right? because this is what i'm trying to prove similarly for attractivity i do this is where i state attractivity okay it stated a little bit differently if you remember attractivity was stated as there exists a delta which could potentially depend on initial time such that if you start within the delta ball as limit t goes to infinity you go to zero okay equilibrium so we assume zero so we go to zero this was attractivity that was a limit based definition now i am not defining it using the limit symbol but i am writing the equivalent thing here how do i say it uh, attractivity is stated as there exists a delta which could be potentially depending on initial time such that if you are given an epsilon okay now there is an epsilon also in the earlier definition in the limit based definition there was no epsilon so if i am given an epsilon there exists a time which depends on epsilon and t0 such that your norm of the vector becomes less than epsilon for time larger than t0 plus t okay so i hope you notice uh, that this is like a convergence uh, i hope you understand that this is sort of like a convergence why you are what am i saying i'm saying that so in all these definitions by the way you may not yet be very comfortable converting words to uh, mathematical definitions like this but in all these definitions the sequence in which things appear are very important very important in the stability definition there exists uh, sorry given an epsilon there exists delta first came epsilon then came delta all right i'm not preaching here but okay first came epsilon then came delta yeah, it's not chicken and egg uh, there is clear certainty here well even in the case of chicken and egg there is but okay we're not going there okay but first came epsilon then came delta all right in this case first came delta and then i'm saying given an epsilon there exists a t okay so the sequence is very important what am i saying all i'm saying is all of this mess all of this is just saying limit as t goes to infinity is zero it's just this whatever is highlighted here is just stating this much okay why am i saying it in this messy way you might ask yeah you should ask because that's what i can prove huh? because unless i define what is limit uh, i can't prove anything huh? so this is the definition of the limit hmm? if you say anything limit is actually convergence right i hope you understand limit as t goes to infinity something going to actually convergence okay in fact limit as t goes to anything is a convergence result on functions yeah just it's just you had sequences which were discrete points if you move from sequence to functions you say as t goes to infinity x of t goes to some value so all this goes to goes to means convergence okay so it looks exactly like convergence if you forget the first part if you forget all this there exists delta and, and, and starting in delta ball and all that okay uh, there exists delta such that you start in delta all this you forget if i'm given an epsilon i'm saying that there exists a time large enough such that beyond that time my norm x is less than epsilon okay so whatever epsilon you give me you can give me say 1 start suppose you give me epsilon equal to 1 i can give you a time cap t such that my norm of the vector is less than 1 for all time beyond that if you give me epsilon is half i can give you another capital t so is that the norm of the vector remains below half for all time beyond this t plus cap t 
T0 plus cap T. Okay, this is exactly convergence. Okay, basically it means that as you keep increasing time, you are moving closer. Okay, you are moving closer to the desired point. In this case, it's zero. Okay, this is precisely stating convergence. Okay, the only thing is it is keeping it local by saying that there exists delta such that if all this happens. Um, and of course, if initial conditions start in delta, then all this happens. Okay. Otherwise, no. Uh, if your initial conditions don't start in the delta ball, nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. This delta is actually the called in nonlinear systems as basin of attraction. A lot of you might have heard this term. It's typical to figure this out. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. Great. Once uh, we have understood this alternate definition for attractivity, let's try to prove this. All right, um, because I would never have been able to prove anything with the limit definition. Okay, it's as simple as that. Uh, so the assumption we have it means that v dot is upper bounded by a negative of a class k function. Okay, I hope you this is negative definiteness. Huh? Positive definiteness would mean that v dot is lower bounded by a class k function, but negative definite means v dot is lower <laughs> upper bounded by the negative of a class k function. Just a flipping of signs. That's all, because v dot negative definite just means minus v dot is positive definite. So if you use that logic, you get this. All right. Okay. And we already have this guy. That v is positive definite. Okay. So inside x is x. Whenever x is within the R uh, ball, um, then you have this assumption to be satisfied. Yeah. Excellent. Then, now the point is, how do I prove this? Basically, I have to find a delta such that all of this nice thing happens, this convergence happens. Hmm? Okay, great. How do I prove this? This is saying something about the solution, right? Whenever I write x of t, remember that I am writing the solution itself. This is a notational simplicity I have assumed. Many books do not use the same notation for solution and the state. Uh, but I like to keep life simple. Um, so, uh, so this is sort of the solution, right? So I want to be able to say something about the solution using the Lyapunov function, okay? And that's what I'm sort of going to try to do at least, okay? How do I do it? Look at this. I am going to write v t zero plus t x t zero plus t, okay? Basically, I'm writing the Lyapunov function value at time t0 plus cap t. Okay, I don't know what cap t is yet. All this will come out of my analysis. I'm just saying I added some cap t and I'm going to compute this. How do I compute this? Fundamental theorem of calculus. Integrate, we'll just integrate. Okay, nothing complicated, it's just the fundamental theorem. Starting value plus integration t0 to t0 plus cap t of v dot. Okay, just wrote the fundamental theorem. Okay, now I start using all my cool assumptions. Hmm? Okay, so by the way, on the left hand side, I already have by positive definiteness this guy. Yes, by this. From here, I have this, right? So the left hand side already has some class K function of the state, which is good for me because I know that it's monotonic. State increases, class K function increases. So it's monotonically behaved. So very nice. Okay. On the right hand side, also, I would like something like that. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now, uh, this is what I have. And now I know from the first assumption, the negative definiteness assumption, that this can be written as less than or equal to this guy. Why? Because V dot is less than or equal to minus gamma norm x. So, I have just substituted this here hmm? and because there is a less than equal to the equa equality became a less than equal to, alright, okay. Now I will immediately say what I want. This is a method of proof I like to, uh, this is how I like to like pro write proofs, okay. This is a good way to write proofs because it helps you see where you want to go. Otherwise, if I keep telling you one step of the proof after the other, you will be lost as to why are we even doing all these steps, okay. So, I just want this. Now, what is epsilon 1? Anybody, well, I think it is already down here, but what is epsilon 1? 
exactly we already know what is epsilon it's just minimum of epsilon and r yeah we always use epsilon 1 and not epsilon huh? okay so what happens if these this inequality happens i know that this this inequality this and this together implies this huh? i've just written them and that means that norm of x t0 plus cap t has to be less than epsilon or less than equal to epsilon okay and this is this is what i need right and by the way i i notice that i chose capital t arbitrarily hmm? so for any capital t beyond this also this will work nothing is going to change okay i hope that's evident to you okay i mean because the time i chose is pretty much arbitrary in fact i didn't have to write it as t0 plus t or anything i could have just written t1 like greater than t0 but just to keep our notation simple we written it in this form all right okay so so this is what i want now obviously how do i get it i have some expression great so obviously what will i work on i will work on this hmm? any any guesses how do you think we will proceed so this see because everything else is clear right i have to just work on this inequality now hmm? everything else is pretty much set how do you think i'll proceed what first first what all other things you have to find you mean in this definition first i want a delta right okay i hope it's evident to you that delta is connected to this term hmm? size of this term purely governed by delta okay so if i get something on this term i get something on delta okay great and then what about capital t i also have to find capital t because epsilon is a given quantity where do i get capital t from where is capital t in this expression from the second term hmm? so somehow from this term okay so one thing should be sort of evident to you the, the this quantity is always going to be dropping in value Huh? in fact definitely dropping not staying constant huh? staying constant is not a possibility because you see this is a class k function inside so this is going to give some positive contribution so this is if you integrate integration is just so you are integrating a positive so you are summing up positive areas okay this is scalar quantity so you can even think of it as areas under a graph huh? so you are integrating positive quantity so it should be evident to you that this value is dropping so this should give you some hope that if you give me any epsilon which is uh, much smaller than delta typically you can assume huh? epsilon will be much smaller than delta anyway you can give me any epsilon which got nothing to do with nothing no connection with delta unlike stability in stability delta is less than epsilon but here it's not that epsilon can be less than delta more than delta epsilon, but the point is for any epsilon you should be able to find a capital t and the small epsilon is what is important for us and large epsilon is irrelevant you are trying to get to zero so your epsilon needs to be small okay so this should give you some faith that whatever delta related value i start at i will always be going down hmm? so therefore there is hope that uh, you know you will drop to some class k function of epsilon okay so there is hope that i am going downwards okay so this should give you some hope okay so good we understand that our um, delta term has some connection to this guy and our t term has some connection to this guy okay excellent okay so anyway i have i have stated this again but it is it should be obvious for that for any t bar greater than t this inequality has to hold okay why um, if if t bar is if t bar is larger than t again more positive contribution huh? so anyway it is going smaller only huh? so it's not going to go larger or anything so if you take any time larger than the t you started with you will get smaller values here huh? so this inequality anyway getting maintained huh? we are not worried in fact strict inequality okay great all right so like i said this is what we need hmm? i rewrite it in this form so now i have to figure out how to choose a delta 
how do I choose a delta? I remove the effect of the t somehow. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, so what do we say? We know that we are going to be within this R ball. Hmm? Okay. Anyway, by stability, we've already proved this. Remember, huh? by stability proof itself, with all these assumptions, we've already proved that we are not going to exit the R ball. I hope you remember that we proved it as part of the proof. Okay. Right. So, we know that norm x is going to be less than r. This is a class k function. Huh? So, therefore, this has to be less than gamma r, gamma of r, right, just by monotonicity. Huh? So, I can pull this guy out. Okay. Anyway, that is uh, that's what we are saying. Anyway, uh, we are not, uh, we will use this later on, do not worry about it. We are not using it immediately. Anyway. So, let us go to the choosing, this was just an aside, uh, a fact that we are going to use very soon. Uh, um, let us go to how to choose the delta. Hmm? I know that v is upper, sorry, lower bounded, sorry, uh, yeah, v is lower bounded in this way because of positive definiteness and v is in fact upper bounded just by this. Hmm? So, actually I can completely neglect this term as far as my delta choice goes, okay. And what do I know? Not what do I know, what do I want? I want that this happens, okay, because, because obviously this implies norm x is less than r, okay. We obviously want to maintain that, huh? we do not want to violate that in this proof either, okay. So, if, because if phi norm of x is less than phi r, then norm x is less than r, huh? so we are not interested in violating that condition in this proof. So, what do I do? I choose my delta such that the supremum of this guy is less than phi r, okay, because this is the, this is the term that gives me delta, yeah, evident. So, from here, from just this inequality, I choose a delta, that is it, there is no magic here and you already understand that such a delta exists because we have already done this argument many times. Uh, that is, uh, we, we know that, uh, let us see, if I want to say existence of delta, yeah, I know that v t0, 0 is 0 and I know that phi r is strictly positive and I know that v p0 x is c1 in x, it is continuous, more than continuous, okay. What does it mean? So, v uh, starts at 0 here, yeah, and I want it to take maximum value phi r. So, I want to find the x such that for all x in this domain, it has to take maximum value phi r, okay. So, that is pretty obvious, right, I mean in the sense that this is already, yeah, this is all, I have this much space to play with, right. So, I can always find the um, bound on x, right, I can always find a bound on x such that this happens, right, just by continuity, you already proven this argument, just by intermediate value theorem, okay. So, there has to exist uh, such a domain on x, okay. Um, you can use many other arguments also, by the way, uh, it is not impossible. If you, uh, the other argument for again those of you who have uh, seen and are interested in analysis type evidence, uh, I will tell you that your set, uh, you are interested in, so your, if you look at the function this guy v t0 x, okay, which is a c1 function, right, and you want the image to be here, huh? so uh, if you take the inverse of this set, under this, 
function right this is also a closed set okay this is a closed set in x okay and so you can from that closed set you can obtain whatever your x bound is hmm? why why again analysis freaks why if it's a closed set so you know that we i hope you understand that my image is 0 to phi r right closed set because i said less than or equal to and and lower bound is 0 well known huh? cannot 0 phi r this is where i want to lie it's a closed set i know that the inverse under continuous map is a closed set huh? why do i say that uh, i can find a delta now how do i what would be the delta then not what would be the delta but how do i say i can find a delta just because i have a closed set in x now huh? this is a closed set in the state space state space is some rn uh, so it could be some closed sphere closed square basically square with boundary sphere with boundary hyper sphere with boundary ellipsoid with boundary uh, that would be the sort of sets you are looking at why do i say that uh, then i can find this delta Okay, again, you probably folks still don't are not completely comfortable with the analysis ideas, but the simple argument is the a, a closed set always contains its supremum. Okay, this is it. Yeah, this is all you have to say. Okay, which means that uh, you you can always find the boundary, which means that at the boundary is the delta. The boundary point is the delta point. Yeah, that is the delta. That is which will give you norm x less than delta okay as simple as that yeah again if you did not follow that no problem but the basic idea is that just by intermediate value theorem we've always done this even before because vt uh, vt 0 x takes value 0 at 0 and you wanted to take a, you wanted to take maximum value phi r there has to exist some bounded x such that for all values inside that bounded x Okay, this is not that obvious. Huh? It may seem to you that I am I am just restating all the obvious things. But I can create some funny functions. Uh, I will create it for you. It's so easy. Um, if I make something stupid like this. Hmm? So, so here if I, if I want to claim anything for norm x less than 6. Huh? In this case it is scalar. If you want to claim anything for norm x less than 6, can I make such a claim? No, right? Because at x equal to 5, it explodes. Then it may come back and do nice things, but at x equal to 5, it explodes. Okay? The problem is what? Why? Why is this not behaving nicely and I am saying that my functions will behave nicely? Continuity. This is not continuous at x equal to 5. Hmm? Just by basic continuity, nothing more. You don't need C1 or anything like that. Just by basic continuity, this existence of such a uh, delta is guaranteed. Huh? So that you can say that for all values of state within the delta ball, I am guaranteed to be within phi r. Okay? All right.